Invisey Kids is once again neglected so that their parents can enjoy a stylish vacation. Hello and welcome to Princess Diana channel. Well, folks, I sure hope these babies aren't real, because if they are, poor little creatures have been abandoned once again, so their parents can run away and try to convince the world that their marriage is definitely not broken. The Daily Mail has obtained the exclusive that Harry and Meghan stroll hand in hand on a romantic holiday to the chic Canoan Island in the Grenadines. So we're told that Meghan and Harry flew, I'm sure by private jet, to the small island of Kanoian after a week spent promoting mental health projects in New York. They report that after a week of promoting mental health projects in New York, Meghan and Harry, the Duke and Duchess of Hypocrisy, left on a private jet, I'm sure, to the small island. And a passerby, I assume a paid paparazzi, photographed the couple as they left a gourmet food store inside the Sandy Lane Yacht Club and Glossy Bay Marina on Friday. And we learn that the tiny Caribbean island is only three miles wide, but has a reputation as the place where billionaires go to escape millionaires thanks to its beautiful sandy beaches and a handful of luxury resorts. If this is a place where billionaires go to escape millionaires, then what the hell are these two creepy guys doing there? These two are not billionaires that I mean, come on. So it seems that now, in addition to trying to convince us that they are really famous and that people really like them, they are also trying to convince us that they are much richer than they actually are. There's no way these two are billionaires. Now I know, Meghan can't stand the fact that Harry isn't a billionaire and that's exactly why she was trying to get along with Gordon Getty. Before his family put an end to it, but still that I guess she realizes now that since she can't trick an old billionaire into marrying her, she'll just try to convince everyone that she and Harry are billionaires. Simple. Now let's remember that Meghan Markle is above all an incredibly superficial person. So for her, nothing is more important than appearances. We must always keep this in mind and I'm sure she chose this specific place for them to go. He said, Harry, people say we are short of money. People act as if we are poor. We can't let them think that. I have a good idea. Let's go to this island of billionaires, and then everyone will believe that we are billionaires too. I know, thank you, Harry. It's a great idea, like all my ideas. So, according to the bought and paid source who spoke to the Daily Mail, they seemed happy. As Harry left the store, he lightly bumped one of the barrels outside, and they both laughed, and Meghan took his hand they just seemed very happy to be vacationing together. I'm doing well. Did Harry collide with one of the barrels outside? Is he already drunk? And yes, I'm sure Meghan's claw grabbed her hand, because that's what she always does. I have to keep it under control somehow. And then the article tells us that Meghan and Harry were shopping at Fay, an exclusive grocery store which presents itself as an exclusive selection of fresh organic seasonal products, from vegetables to cheeses, including desserts and seafood. And exclusive cuts of meat imported from France. Oh yeah, because remember Meghan is a big foodie, nothing but the best for her. Now this could also go hand in hand with Megan's plan to relaunch TIG or whatever her new online business venture is. I heard she will promote lifestyle products similar to Gwyneth Paltrow's, and I wouldn't be surprised, in fact, I would totally agree. And then, as you read on, rooms at the Mandarin Oriental start at 837 and go up to over 9,000 per night. We learn that the Soho Beach House, oh, okay, the Soho Beach House, of course, costs 1200 for its most luxurious room. Some members, like Megan, get a discount and only pay 1020 per night. Oh, such a generous discount. Ah, uh, Megan is so lucky to be a member of Soho House, isn't she? Well, that's where he made his money, after all. And then he goes into more detail about Megan's connection to Soho House. 
Megan has a long association with Soho House Properties through her long-standing friendship with Marcus Anderson, the membership manager of the Lifestyle Club chain. It was Anderson, we are reminded, who set up a private room at London's Soho House for the Montecito couple's first date, while Megan hosted a low-key girls' night out before her 2018 wedding at Soho Farmhouse in Chipping Norton, UK. I'm surprised they didn't include the time Megan spent working at Soho House as an escort. I thought that was how the meeting with Harry was set up. Oh, isn't that the story they tell? I'm doing well. I'm telling you guys, this article is the strangest thing I've ever read. Because it's half a PR piece for Megan, and the other half is basically like a travel brochure for this island. This all makes no sense. I can't understand who is behind this. But I can tell you up front that this is not an example of impartial journalism, that's for sure. The article then goes into more detail about this amazing island that none of us will ever go to, before talking a little more about Harry and Meghan's trip to New York which they say went very well. So the environmentally conscious couple staying at the Equinox Hotel in Hudson Yards drew some criticism for being driven a block from the event in a seven-car convoy of gas-guzzling SUVs, but otherwise they enjoyed a smooth journey. Really? But did they do it? I mean, last time I checked, they got a lot of flack for this little stunt. And I'm not even sure there are many people there to hear them speak to us oh I'm not sure that we can really count that as a smooth trip. But whatever you say. And then they sum up the article with what Megan said about being parents to invisible children. And they talk about Megan and Harry's surprise visit to that school in Brooklyn. Yet another school visit they had no business doing, by the way that I was surprised, though, that there wasn't more mention of artificial and invisibed. I mean, seriously, who was taking care of those two children? Is it Doria? I'm surprised Doria wasn't with them. It is weird how recently we had noticed that Doria was going everywhere with them. But lately I don't think we've seen him. Was he in New York with them? I haven't seen any photos of him. I wondered if Doria had gone too far, perhaps she had done something to upset the all-powerful leader of this house, Meghan Markle. And now, maybe she's locked in the henhouse, or the basement, or wherever Megan places her servants when they upset her. The photo they have with this article is also funny. The one, I guess, where Harry staggers out of that place and crashes into a barrel. It looks like Megan is trying to hold his hand or he is trying to hold her hand. I can't even understand what's going on, to be honest. But they're not actually holding hands, it's more like they're touching each other's wrists. I guess at this point they hate each other so much they can't even stand having their fingers intertwined. But maybe we're too hard on them. I mean, maybe they were just exhausted after those few days of working in New York. I mean, it was so hard for them. They had to escape for a few days. This is very similar to what happened after Invictus. All they had to do was go to Portugal and get away from it all. So maybe we should stop accusing them of trying to convince us that they're still in love. Maybe we should just understand that they were tired. They needed a break. As workers, we all need to understand that after a few days or even a week of hard work, it is important to take at least a week off and go on vacation to a luxurious place and pay 1,000 euros a night for his room. After all, that's what ordinary people do. And Meghan and Harry, as they have repeatedly told us, are normal people. They are recognizable. Yes, they have the title of Duke and Duchess, but they are still just like us, just like us, if not better, because they are really, really rich and really, really famous. If you don't take our word for it, look, they have their pictures in every magazine. Yes, of course they pay people for that, but we couldn't do it anyway. When will they both wake up and realize that flaunting their wealth to their faces won't make us like them? In fact, it is precisely this attitude that is why people don't want to associate with them, why people don't like them. People have had enough, but I don't think they'll ever realize it. And you, what do you think of Gruesome Twosome's latest escape? Please let me know your opinion below in the comments section. Before you go, 
Don't forget to like and share this video with anyone who might enjoy it, and subscribe so you don't miss anything from Princess Diana's channel. Thank you very much for listening and I will come back to see you later in future videos.